79% of all Americans have a social media account compared to 10% in 2008. Today, I'm going to talk about how you should keep your social media. My credibility behind it is I am a lifelong social media user pretty much. I've been using it since 2010 for quite a while now and I use it for multiple times a day. I've seen everything from good social media posts to terrible social media posts made by most people's parents on Facebook. I believe you should listen because social media is such a big thing in everyone's lives today, especially during this quarantine time when everyone is on it. And I think a lot of people don't know what you should or shouldn't keep on it. My points for this speech will be um, just basically all the social media platforms that are big without going too far into it. You got Twitter, your Instagram slash Snapchat, and Facebook. First things first, we're going to start with Twitter. Now, proper etiquette on Twitter is you want to keep your posts short and sweet. You don't want to go too ranty. That's where it's kind of like the anti-Facebook. You can keep your Twitter a little bit not super squeaky clean, but you can't keep it super dirty either. It just kind of looks bad, and employers do look at that even though they're not supposed to. Um, what you should post is mostly just keep it short and sweet. Say what you're doing for the day or what is going on in your life without going too ranty into it. Ranting is more of a Facebook thing where Twitter is more meant for what is on your mind or what's going on in your life. Another big part of Twitter is bios. Now for your bio, you tend to want to have something about what you're going to do with your life. If you are a psychology major, you'd want to put psychology major, you and I 2021, and then go from there. Um, also in your bio, tend to stray away from listing too many personal things. You don't wanna be too out there as there are really weird people that will cyber stalk you and stuff. And you don't really want that in life. Um, next social media I'm going to go over is Instagram slash Snapchat. I kind of threw them together just basically because I feel it's the same thing. Just you post different things on which platform you wanna use. On your Instagram, it. Nowadays, you can directly connect it to your Facebook just because Facebook bought them out. But before then, it used to be its own separate thing, really. And first thing about Instagram is I personally don't think you should use the story feature on Instagram. I feel that's a Snapchat thing. And of course, you can post them on there, but I wouldn't make your Instagram story too long. I feel long Instagram stories are kind of a joke. Um, my backing behind that is it, just watch an Instagram story that's more than two minutes. <laughs> um, on Snapchat, I feel you should keep concerts off your Snapchat story. Um, if I wanted to go to the concert, I myself would have bought a ticket to go to the concert. I do not care that you are at the concert and you're posting every single song. Maybe you could post clips here and there, but you should not post every single song. Um... Also on Instagram, going back to that, um, there's certain accounts you should and shouldn't follow. You obviously shouldn't follow too racy of accounts. Shouldn't be following those. If you have a girlfriend or a boyfriend and you're following strippers on Instagram, it's probably not a bright move. Probably gonna get yourself in some deep trouble there. Finally, the final social media I'm going to talk about is the lovely land of Facebook. Everybody loves Facebook. Your mom's on it. Your grandma's on it. Your son and daughter are probably on it. Your grandkids are eventually going to be on it. It is the family platform is the way I like to put it. Um, everyone uses it. It's not discriminatory against old people or young people, but there are some major do's and don'ts about Facebook. Now, as I've discussed with you, Roxanne, during class, I am not a big fan of political posts on Facebook, and I think you should keep your politics off of Facebook. I personally don't care if you are left or if you are right. It doesn't phase me, but people just want to start arguments on there, and it's not what the platform's for. I feel the platform of Facebook is for you to share your family, for you to share to your friends the big pictures of things, like 
we went on a family vacation. Here are 15 pictures of our family enjoying our vacation. That kind of stuff is on Facebook. Not, oh, if you voted for Trump, you need to die. Or, oh, if you vote Joe Biden, go F yourself or something. It, it's not very delightful on Facebook. So proper etiquette behind that is just keep it safe, keep it normal. Um, you don't need to show that you have the biggest ego in the room all the time. You, it's just Facebook. It's not real life. Finally, we get to the conclusion aspect of this speech. I know, Roxanne, you probably learned a lot from this speech, and I failed to name any of my sources during the speech, which I just realized during the middle of my speech. So I can't really go back and do that. But if there's one thing to take from this, it's that you need to keep your social medias clean. There's no excuse about it. We're all about 10 years into this social media thing. You should know how to keep your social medias clean. From Twitter to Instagram to Facebook, there's really nothing else you can do, but especially in today's quarantine days, but keep it clean.